This is me, the Ended Viking, and this is Rush in the Forest, the Three Little Pigs. Now, this box that I have right here, this is all wood. And also, like, the components for this game are, like, 99% wood. Okay, <laughs> I'll show you how the game, when I show you how the game is played, you'll, you'll get to see all those different components. Now, um, this is a game that is themed, obviously, Three Little Pigs. Um, each of the players, you're going to play with uh, two or three people. It works best with three people, each person playing a pig. Uh, and they, um, each person is going to be uh, racing through the forest trying to collect the resources, whether it is uh, hay or straw, uh, sticks or logs or, you know, bricks that they're using to create their house. Uh, whatever pig builds their house the fastest is going to win the game. Along the way, um, the wolf isn't going to really technically be attacking uh, the, uh, the the pigs, but they will be moving about the board, and if they land on certain spaces, they'll actually take resources or parts of the house that you're building away from you uh, as the game is played. You also are able to pick up some cool little tiles that'll give you some special powers that'll be able to help you out a little bit or like mess with the other players a little bit. And it's all in all just like a very, very fun little family game that has like enough crunch to it that like the adults when they're playing it with their kids or even adults playing other adults are going to have some fun playing. So let me show you how to play Rush in the Forest, Three Little Pigs, and then we'll come back here and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so this is Rush in the Forest, uh, Three Little Pigs. Um, as I said, this game is predominantly, while well, it's almost all made out of wood, I mean, with the uh, exception of these little cloth uh, screens there on the player boards and uh, the two six-sided dice, um, this is all wooden pieces. Now, uh, the goal of this game, uh, as if you, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, Three Little Pigs um, uh, fairy tale, is that each pig is trying to uh, build up their uh, their house uh, faster than the others. So you have a, a house of straw, uh, which is this pig's player board, a house of uh, sticks, and a house of bricks up there. Um, the way they do that is they are going to move about in this center area. Uh, as they run around the center area, what they're going to be trying to do is they're going to try to land on the resources uh, that are the ones they're looking for. And then they'll pull that resource uh, chit up and then it'll be you know good for a certain number of pieces of straw or wood or what have you. And then they'll be able to, uh, you know, trade those in for from pieces from the. There's this nice little hedgehog lady over here. I don't remember her being in the, uh, in in the in, in the fairy tale, but she runs the store uh, where they collect their items that are over here. And as they collect those, um, then uh, they're able to buy the pieces uh, for their house. All right, so the game works pretty simple. So each pig starts in a corner, and the big bad wolf starts over here. Um, you, as When you start as a player, what you're going to do is you're going to roll both of the dice. Uh, the red die is going to represent the wolf. The green die is going to represent your pig. So you're going to roll the dice. Let me just roll. And so then the first thing you do is you move the wolf. And so you're just going to go one, two, three. Now, you don't have to worry about the, him catching the pigs because after the first move, your pig is going to enter into the center area. And they're going to be moving about uh, and, you know, collecting the different resources. Um, but what you do have to worry about is that if on your turn, you notice that in this corner, that corner, and that corner, um, there are, there's a minus one, a minus three, and a minus one in those spots. And if you land, if he lands in those spots, you're going to lose resources that you've collected. So that's not a good thing, obviously, because uh, you're working against him. And of course, losing th minus three is bad. But anyway, so we're gonna move one, two, three, uh, one, two, three, like so. And now we're gonna move our four spaces. Now, after the first move, which you're moving into the area, um, you can't move diagonally. You move diagonally one like that, and then you're going to move orthogonally, uh, vertically and horizontally, uh, about this area. The trick is, is that you can't collect resources except for the resource that you actually need to create your building. So 
you're gonna go four and you're gonna be like, okay, so that's one, I have three more steps. How can I land on another uh, spot that has hay? Which in this case, it's like one, two, three, no, one, two, three, no, one, two, three, no, one, two, three. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to do that. One of the rules also is that you can't go one, you can't retrace your steps. You can't just kind of go back and forth like so. So you're not allowed to do that. Also, you'll notice that there's like these trees and those bushes. You can't move through uh, a tree and you can't move through another pig. So if this like pig was there, I wouldn't be able to move through him uh, if he's in that spot. Uh, other than that, you're free to move however you like. But in this case, I'm not able to land on any hay, so I'm gonna go one, two, three, four. Maybe then, you know, you're in, you start trying to plan yourself, like seeing like, you know, hedge your bets as far as the directions you wanna go. So let me just roll uh, for the wood. And so we go three, one, two, three, and we're gonna go one, two. Now he's lucky, he can go one, two, and he's gonna land right on this spot that's going to have uh, the wooden, uh, the sticks, or the wood, or the logs, or whatever. Now, the first thing you do is you turn it over, and I, this is actually fortunate, because I actually, it's a question mark. Um, you turn this over and you reveal it to everybody else so they know what you've got. And then you take this and you place it behind the, uh, your, your, your hut, your hut there. Now, a question mark, the, the, the resource token is worth one. It takes a total of three resources to claim one of your house tiles over there to create your little uh, puzzle that is going to be your house. But you also get to take, with that, you get to take one of these mystery tiles. The mystery tiles are just that. They're mysteries. They're ones that you get to keep and nobody else can look at. And then when you claim them, you're, they're going to have like certain things. Like here you have like the hurricane. Um, all players lose their resources. So basically the resources that people are hiding, they, they're going to lose them. So, I mean, there's also like there's tons of these. that Like tons of different powers and abilities. Um, you have a mole hole. Uh, the wolf uh, moves to the other side of the game board directly across from it. So you can uh, apply that if you want to. You can have a shovel that's going to get rid of a mole hole if somebody tries to play one of those. Um, there's a thieves uh, player who collected more blocks loses a block. So I mean, there's lots of um, different. Oh, you know, just uh, just anything like trouble. You just skip your move. And so these are things that you, you're able to play and you kind of be able to mess with the other players. Like a lot of games, they're just things that you're going to use um, that are going to break the rules in some way and just alter the game up. But anyway, so you claim that, and you put it aside, and then let's just roll for this next one, see what we get here. And so we got a four, and so we go one, two, three, four. Now technically, then um, the person with the bricks would have to lose one of their resources right now, but they don't have any, so you know we just have to go, and we go like one in here. And that's a, actually a brick, so he got lucky. We turn it over, he gets another question mark, just like the other ones, you reveal it to the other players, we'll just take one of these. We'll see, we got a mole hole one, so we'll just take that and place that over there. And the game continues. Now, a couple quick things. Um, you do, now a lot of people said, I mean, when, I, when I, I, I explained this game to them, they're like, well, what if you just don't get very lucky and you aren't landing, you're not rolling the dice well enough to like land on your resource? Well. And or, as the game goes on, you're going to collect those resources and you're going to remove them from the board, there's going to be less and less of what you have. You know, it seems like the game could go on. Well, there is something, I actually I did this on purpose. I, I wanted to show you how the game was played. At the beginning of each one of your turns, you get to claim one of these, you just get to claim one single resource for your particular, uh, um, for your particular house. And so now, like we get over here, because he would have claimed that at the very beginning. We're gonna go ahead and roll and see what we get here. So move the wolf six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And now he gets to move one. There's tons of hay around him, so let's see if we get lucky here. Let's see if I get something that has a two or a three. Nope, I just got another question mark. But I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna look and see just so I can show you how this works. Ah, there we go. So here's one that's plus two, right? So that's gonna be two resources of the hay. So now what he can do is he could turn in this one, he could turn in his hay, 
and then he'd be able to claim one of his tile pieces to start creating his house. Now, actually, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to I'm going to kind of you know quickly uh, put together the house so you can kind of see what it looks like because they do look really cool, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about as far as. Um, like, as far as a family game goes, um, everything about this game, my kids just love. They love the whole process. They love, they love the, like, setting up the game. Um, they loved messing with each other. They <laughs> really enjoyed, like, you know, just even getting their, putting their house together with the puzzle pieces. Of course. But here, hold on. I'm going to grab these, and I'm going to set it up quick. Ah, there we go. So, I'll just show you. So, there, and so it's like a cool little puzzle, and the kids get to put that together as well. Now, I mentioned kids several times here. Um, does this work uh, with adults? Yeah, you know, actually it kind of does because of the, the, the spatial moving around, the being able to mess with each other with the tiles. Now, is it going to be the most, uh, uh, you know, challenging of games you're ever going to play in your life? No, but this is one of those perfect games for when you want to play games with your children where you're not going to be bored to tears when you're playing it because it is it, it it doesn't last too long. The games last about 20 30 minutes and it actually is kind of fun as as the adult to be like challenging yourself to put together and and, and get your house together faster uh, than than the other players that are playing. But let me talk about that that dynamic of like that good range of, of child's game to uh, th that is still fun for adults uh, in my final thoughts. I'll do that right now. All right, thanks a lot for taking the time to learn how to play the game. As I said, it isn't going to be a really, really difficult game to play, and that's perfect because when you're teaching the game to kids, it's one of those things where you want to be able to help them out. Now, some of the special powers on the tiles that you get, these little special tile uh, tiles that you get when you collect the question marks, um, I would say that, like, my son is six, and I kind of had to help him just a little bit or remind him, like, what certain things did. Um, my ten-year-old daughter got the game like it was nothing. I mean, she was moving around, having a blast, and everything like that. Now, admittedly, my kids are, you know, big board game players because they play a lot of board games with their dad, but I don't really see a problem as far as families go and as far as children. I, I, would, I would think that with even with just a little bit of help, um, kids, like, in preschool um, or or kindergarten would be able to play this one really, really easily. Uh, it's it's definitely something also that I think can teach kids a little some things too. I mean, it's going to teach them how to count as far as like counting the resources and seeing what they can do as far as collecting the different things uh, for um, the the pieces of their building. Um, and also the buildings have like the numbers on them, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that helps them as well. It's going to teach them how to you know like as far as counting the numbers, as far as the spaces they move on the board, and also just some sight recognition things that are going to be going on you know like how do I move five spaces so I can land on a, on, on a like a log so I can actually collect more resources to build my house so yes it's it's one of those tricky games where it's going to be fun they're going to have have fun building their house they're going to have fun uh, messing with dad or mom uh, but they're also you know, gonna you're gonna trick them into learning something along the way, which you know is always a really nice benefit when you're playing a game with with your family. I mentioned that it is like enough. There's enough to it that like uh, adults are gonna have it. Now, this is the whole premise that I have here. So there's tons of board games out there. We've all seen them, and these aren't necessarily bad games. I mean, I've played Candyland with my kids. Um, you know, I played games like you know, operation with my kids. I've, you know, I, I've played trouble with my kids, you know. So, you know, and I'm not saying at all that I've had a bad time playing those. I think they are, um, those types of mass market board games have their spot. They have their, you know, niche, uh, the, 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 and they belong to in like, a, you know, your games cupboard, if you will. I would have, if you're like me, you had a games cupboard that, that, that your, that your family kept all their board games in. Um, but I do think that the, the big problem with games like that is that, um, by and large, I mean, they're, they're very good in my opinion in like teaching kids how to play a game, teaching good sportsmanship, um, you know, giving some fundamental like, you know, group activity, um, skills there. But 
like as an adult when they bring those out you're like oh geez you know just like as you're like oh you know like you start making sure that like um you, you you're moving the spinner <laughs> So, like, you know, they, they get a better number so they can get a little further down the track, things like that. And um, and so, you know, ultimately, you, you want to have games, you know, like this that, that are going to be, you know, as I said, not, like, super challenging or anything like that because there's a fine line there of, of, of making sure your kids are still having fun and they're not getting bogged down with rules. But there's got to be enough meat on the bone that me, as the dad playing this with his two kids, it, I'm going to enjoy myself as well. You know, rolling the die, you know, turning the, you know, having the reveal moment of, of, of turning the disc over and seeing what I get on the other side. You know, stuff like that. You know, and, and you know, I, I like games where you can mess with people, and I like having these, you know, tiles that, that you're able to, you know, have little special powers and special actions that you, you can wait and, and use at specific times that are really going to be helpful. So, you know, it's, it's just that perfect game for that purpose, right? Now, I did force this upon my gaming group and made a couple of my friends play it. And, you know, we had fun playing it. No, I mean, is it something that's going to be busted out every single night? No, but, I mean, were we able to, like, kind of just relax, let our brains turn off for a while and just play the game and just kind of have some fun, you know, you know, being jerks to each other as the three little pigs? Yeah, and we had fun with it. And I think that is, like, an added level of the game that, like, I wasn't expecting it to be there. I figured this would just be a straight family game, but I was still able to find, as I said, enjoyment, you know, without any kids at the table, which I think is, you know, pretty cool as well. So, if you're looking for, like, a, a family game that you can add to your collection that's going to look really, really sweet, because, I mean, you know, the, I know there's, like, a colored version, uh, like, like with, the, with the, the pieces being painted, but I don't think I, I would like that as much as this. I think, um, you know, like, I, I kind of like the, 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 you know, the austere look, if you will, of, of the wooden pieces, and, you know, it's just, it's, it's neat that it looks like it does, but it's also, like, um, I don't know, like, minimalistic in a way? Is that a... Maybe I'm not an art guy, so I, I might not know what I'm talking about there. But I like the way it looks. I think it's, like, unique in, in its presentation, and I think that adds a lot, um, for me anyway, for the enjoyment. So there you go. Um, if you have any questions about the game, please ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Um, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm Dead Viking, telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.